What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Sturdy Code, and I'm back with another video. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about how I got my software developer job without obtaining my bachelor's in computer science. Roll the tape! So, this basically kind of makes me a self-taught developer in a way because I'm applying for these jobs without having my bachelor's in computer science. I do have my associates in computer science, but what's that? That's basically a high school diploma. Nobody really looks at that as a degree anymore. It's just, you know, two years, okay? I'm not trying to downplay anybody who has their associates and, you know, they doing their thing. Go ahead and keep doing you, baby. I don't have my bachelor's in computer science and Drum roll, please. I dropped out of college. That's a whole different story for a whole nother video. So stay tuned, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Comment what you don't like, what you like, like, dislike, you know, subscribe if you like the video. But that's for another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about what I went through basically to get the position I have. So I knew I had to put in the work and I made a video about this on how important it is to network. So make sure you watch that video. And it's just super important. Like there's no way around it. If you're not a computer science student and you don't have a degree in computer science, I basically don't have, a, uh, uh, I basically don't have a degree in computer science. So I'm basically a self-taught developer in many ways because I'm doing things in my current position where I didn't learn these technologies in school per se. It's all that I learned by myself, you know, Udemy, YouTube, and just books. Like I'm just doing it, I'm pounding in the work, I'm putting in the work. So the first thing I did was network. I had to go to meetup.com, Eventbrite, conferences, and hackathons. Like I said in my previous video, hackathons are super important. Those are the best networking place, period. If you don't have a computer science background, if you're just starting out and you haven't gone to a hackathon yet, you are doing a grave mistake. Like that's something that's needed, I guess you could say, if you don't have a computer science background or don't have any experience at all. So make sure you go to hackathons. I've been going to hackathons since I only knew HTML. So make sure you go out and do that. Um, another part of networking is also on LinkedIn, on social media, on um, Instagram. You have to have some kind of presence online so that when people search your name, the first things that pop up is your website, your LinkedIn, you know, your whatever it is. You just have that kind of presence that it's easy enough for employers to find you. You know, your GitHub pops up. So make sure you network in that aspect as well, not only just in person, but also on social media. Um, so on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is super, super important, super important. You have to go onto the search bar. You have to type in software engineering or software development, go to some comments, make sure you like a comment, make sure you um, comment on a comment, make sure you reply to someone you know, make sure these replies are also thoughtful. Don't just go on LinkedIn and just type on the search bar, uh, software engineering, go into the content section and just start scrolling down, liking people's comments because you're just wasting your time. You know, make sure your comments are thoughtful. Make sure you're commenting on things you want to comment on um, and making these connections meaningful. Also, another thing as a self-taught developer that I am, I did a lot of side projects on my own. Like I did not wait for, when I was in school, I did not wait for a professor to give me a project for me to start. I was at home. I was at on Google beginners project. I was in everywhere, YouTube, just trying to find anything that can upgrade my resume and upgrade my portfolio. I made a website. If you don't have a website, make one right now like after this video after you like and comment subscribe make sure you're doing your portfolio and it's easy to upload you could do it on heroku you don't have to pay for it you could do it on github uh, pages 
whatever that's called. They say that employers like that you have a portfolio that's not on GitHub or Heroku or you know any of these cloud-based uh, technologies that are you know that you just upload for free. You know they want to have like a dedicated domain, etc. But it doesn't matter. Just have it up there. It doesn't matter if it's whack. It doesn't matter if it's trash. Just put it up there. And when you're doing these projects, make sure you're doing it for the quality of the project. Don't go and just hammer out many projects and thinking that the quantity of projects is gonna help you out. Because if they're all trashy, you're basically wasting your time and you haven't done one. You know what I'm saying? So make sure these projects are quality projects that there's something that pertains to the type of industry you want to work in. So if you're interested in finance, make some financial application, some fintech, uh, budgeting kind of system, etc. If you're into education, do like an e-learning kind of website. If you're into, you get the point, right? So do something that pertains to your industry. And that's what I did. I did a lot of finance stuff. Uh, I'm currently not in the finance industry, but hopefully in the future I land there because that's where I want to go. So I'm going to continue doing applications that have to do with fintech, etc. I went to clubs. I did projects, like I said earlier. I went to hackathons, like I said earlier. You know, clubs are very important as well because that shows how passionate you really are. Like outside of the four walls of school, of your classroom, if you're a computer science major, or outside of your comfort zone, you know, you're going to these clubs and you're trying to learn something. That's your initiative to actually get out there and actually learn something. Uh, that's another thing also, you wanna put yourself in a spot where serendipity could find you, where you can find luck and luck can find you, because that's exactly what happened to me. So what I did is that I went to a CUNY school and CUNY has this kind of thing called CUNY Simplicity, where students can find jobs pertaining to their uh, particular major. So that's exactly what I did. And there was about over 100 students about to apply for this CUNY Simplicity. There was just like this orientation about it. And I'm looking at everybody and everybody's like talking about, you know, these technologies that I do not know nothing about. And, you know, I'm feeling kind of discouraged. Like, you know, these people know more than me. Like, how can I possibly get a job over these hundreds of students? But that's where serendipity kicks in because luck, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, but luck found me. So that's basically what I'm trying to say. So I opened my Simplicity account after the orientation and um, I put all my projects that I did prior. So all the projects that I polished, all the projects that I put a lot of work on, I put on my Simplicity portfolio. And next thing you know, uh, like about three, four weeks later, they call me. Called me and she said, you know, we're interested in you. We think you, ha you fit this criteria and we would like you to interview with us. I was losing my mind. I was like, whoa! Like literally, I'm in school and I'm losing my mind, but it made all the difference. It, you know, it got me to where I am today and I'm grateful for that, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not something that I particularly had a focus on, but it's something that I could network off or learn more on and it made all the difference so make sure you're putting yourself in that spot where luck could find you because that's exactly what i did and that's why i am where i am today and if you get an internship i mean you don't have to get an internship to get a job a full-time software developer or software engineering job but if you do get a internship what you want to do is go above and beyond do more than what's asked of you you know, I did certain things that didn't fit in my description, my job description, but I did it anywho because I knew that I was gonna gain more experience. I was gonna gain knowledge in other areas. And so I did. I designed templates. I prototyped things that wasn't even asked of me. I did it so that I can show them like, look, I know how to do this too. I can wear many other hats and I can bring more than what's shown in my resume onto the table, right? I went above and beyond and that internship or that place gave me a full-time 
software developer job and it's a whole different title so i was a web developer intern and now i am a application developer and you know that made all the difference so you know i networked i went on linkedin i have a youtube now i did medium blogs medium blogs somewhat helped me because it showed people that you know i had a way of communicating to people in a certain way and they seen that um so i did that um so I did many other things. So, you know, just get out there. The biggest tip that I want you to take away from this is get out there and let serendipity find you. That's it, I'm out.